start the stream and we should be good to go. Hopefully we should be good to go. There we go. As always, I am not making any claims as to whether or not this will actually work, but you know. Let's it would see. be nice. Otherwise, we'll have two hours to fill with, uh, I don't know, what? Girls Garden again? <laughs> hey, don't complain. And this thing has reset everything again. Why? Let's see. I'm trying to set up my PS3 controller here in a hurry to actually play like a SNES controller, which helps. There we go. Alright, so welcome to the inaugural Horror Hour stream. Uh, I'm Arthur Wolf, and today I am joined by Domus. Say hi, Domus. Hello. I said oh, I say hi, early. damn it. Said, I said hi. say hi. <laughs> Very good. Oh. Hi, damn it. <laughs> Ruined everything. We're going to have to start over now. <laughs> so, for our first Horror Hour feature, I was planning on playing a very, very, very good horror game released for the SNES back in the good old days, but, but only in Japan. It's the beautiful name Kuroku Tawa, or Clock Tower, Romanized. It was finally ROM hacked in the mid aughties and released to a English speaking audience and it's actually a really good game. It's a really good game. Not only a good horror game, but it's actually a legit good game period. So I'm very well, curious to see will will it be able to scare me in <laughs> such low <laughs> processing power, but I can have nightmares about the game E.T., so I think it'll be able to scare me. <laughs> Everyone who played E.T. has nightmares about E.T. <laughs> <laughs> Why? No! Alright, let's just load this baby up. And I'm basically going to be making some uh, horror commentary in the sense that I will be analyzing the opening a bit. I'm planning to do this for all the horror games we play, because they sort of all start in generally the same way. So, let's have a look at Clock Tower. Good lord, this is going to be loud, isn't it? This is going to take some time to spell out. Yep. Clock Tower by Human Entertainment is a survival horror game featuring uh, a clock tower. Clock towers are that. normally pretty small, so I hope there's some area around it. Yeah, actually, big spoilers here, but you don't really spend all that much time in the clock tower. <laughs> the game also features a lot of endings. Wow. Eight. And a ninth secret ending, actually. Wow. Now, are they uh, one of those things where you have to play the entire game differently, or just do something slightly different at the end? Many of them, actually, you have to play the game differently in various places. And the hilarious thing is, that it, is it, it is possible to set yourself up for the game in such a way that you appear to win... Well, then you lose in the last two minutes, and then you have to start over, <laughs> in true Japanese style. Wow. Harsh man. Yeah. 
Now the game has a regular start, a quick start and a continue function. Very nice of them actually. The ordinary start basically brings you into the game with a full intro and so on and so on. It introduces characters, it has an opening sequence and you basically get the whole story. Quick start, it skips an immediately to the first gameplay section, which means that if you're starting a new game and already you know the plot, you can choose Quick Start instead and you won't have to bother with all that shit. How convenient. Yes. And then there's the continue function, which can be used from the main screen or from within the game when you die. It basically places you at the last point before you died, giving you a chance to do things differently. Of course, for many of the dead ends in this game, continuing doesn't really help. At so it's all. not that you push the wrong button, it's you push the wrong button 30 minutes ago. Pretty much, yeah. In any case, let's start a new game. Lord, this is loud, isn't it? Good for the scary. <laughs> Still, we're probably going to have to lower the volume just a smidge. Step one, isolation. All the good horror games begin with isolation. You are without, there is no possibility for outside help. You are far away from the rest of society and you are usually brought to a place that you have no prior knowledge of. So does that rule out Resident Evil 2 on all three counts? Well, you're isolated in a different sense, in that the city of Raccoon City in Resident Evil 2 is walled off, which means that there's no help coming. You're still isolated from society. You're just surrounded by buildings and zombies. And here we go. Gameplay. So... This is us, Jennifer Simpson. We are 14 years old. We're a bit slow, but we're really nice and polite. We lost our father many, many years ago, and we have been living as orphans for most of our lives. Sad backstory. Now, it doesn't quite make... Uh clear. Is she adopted here, or is she with the other orphans here? We have been adopted. We've all been adopted by the same person, actually. Creepy already. Meet Lot. She's basically the tomboy of the group, as you can tell by the fact that she's the only one who has short hair. She's pretty nice to us. Sudden Javelin is horrified that she walks at this pace the entire game. <laughs> Actually, you can run. The blonde lady is Laura. She is a bit of a stuck-up bitch, but she's nice enough. And then we have Anne, who is the down-to-earth big sister type. 
This is our merry little group. We've basically li been living in the granite orphanage together for the last few years and generally been decent enough buddies, old pals. Oh, someone's taking a while. That's always a bad sign. Don't worry. I will go look for her. Step 2. Separation. The playable character is separated. And then something happens. And here we go. In only two steps, we have reached tension. We are isolated in a place that we do not know, which makes a human being scared by just by the nature thing, because that's human instinct. We hate being isolated, and we hate being in new places. Second, we are separated from our pack, which is also frightening because humans are pack animals and rely on one another for psychological support. Now then, all we need is step three. Can you guess what step three is, kids? Bad things start happening? Bad things start happening. Basically, step three is the third S. We start with isolation, separation, and finally... QM Squirrel guesses semi-nude girls. No, that no, that's 1980s slasher fix. Oh? Step 3. Survival. Is that part of the game? The weird... Not really. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say that would scare the heck out of me. And those are basically the three steps to survival horror. Isolation, separation, and survival. And you don't really need much more than that. The scary guy with the scissors helps, though. Yeah, I suppose that scissors is the third step in this game, so to speak. Right, let's continue. Now, the thing is, going into the bathroom here and locking the door will kill you. Whee. Let's just continue in this direction and see what we can find. Door 
doors, 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 doors. Oh, hey. What do we have here? A car. A means of escape, perhaps. Of course we are not. Of course we are probably not getting anywhere unless we have a car key. this door? Can we try this door? Jesus, stop running. <laughs> Crying out loud. Laura, what the hell are you doing? She's in awful hurry to get everywhere. Right, kitchen. Well, we're probably not going to... Wow. He came straight through the door. I'm surprised okay. at how scary it manages to be without being at all bloody in the depths. She just kind of falls down. <laughs> yeah, well, it relies a lot on the tension. The fact that you know that he's chasing you and you haven't really figured out a way to get away yet. Let's continue again. And use the fact that he's passing through the door at the exact same time we are to escape. Now, do you think that's kind of a glitch, or it's actually intended? It's a basically a we. It's a weakness in the game engine, basically. Let's try this door. Big metal door. Now, did you hurt yourself by running? <laughs> sort of, yeah. Basically, the color of Yennefer's portrait is her energy meter. The more energy she has, the more capable she is of escaping death. So she basically went down to critical by falling on her face? Yep. Now, you re can recover uh, energy in various ways. The simplest way is to simply stand still for a while. If you do, she will actually just sit down and catch her breath for a while. It doesn't seem to, seem to be a good thing, though, when a guy with giant scissors is chasing. Yeah, well, there is that, isn't it? Oh no! A wall! Yenfa's greatest enemy. Oh god. The question is, which floor is he on? Up! Oh! <laughs> oh. Excuse me, will I take these stairs at a nice leisurely pace? <laughs> the slowness of it is very creepy. The fact that you're running away from him but you don't get physically very far away. I also like that they are timing the scissor snaps with her steps on the stairs. <laughs> Like it. It's not guaranteed, actually. 
There are various ways to escape the system, man, and uh, I was thinking that we want to show one method and we can see if it works. His peripheral vision is pretty bad. So it looks like we're safe. For now. Now is he pretty much can show up at any time throughout this game? Pretty much. Now it should be mentioned that there are some escapes like this that are guaranteed. Basically they will always work. But there are also some that will not always work and this is one of those. Hopefully we'll play enough for you to see what I mean. So sometimes you can hide in the shower and he won't notice you and other times he will? The uh, shower is in the very beginning of the game is always a dead end. You're not supposed yeah. to go there, basically. Depending on how fast you get there, which path you take, you actually get a different kill scene for the first victim. Is it always the same victim, or...? I think that's exactly the thing. Depending on whether you go to the room with the stained glass or to the uh, bathroom first, it is a different person that dies. Hmm. Right, now that we're not being chased by a madman, let's take the chance to explore a bit. We have an open. Now what is the difference between a pointer and a square? Square means interaction. Pointer means walk in this direction. Today's date is marked. Ooh, ominous. So what's in the fridge? Oh, a ham! Picked up some ham. Yeah, baby! We can then hold A to open our inventory and select HAM! <laughs> we are now ham. Sadly, ham does not help us at the moment. Ham always helps. Yeah, well, let's put it like this. There is a sequence in this game where you will be very happy if you brought ham. Ravenous dogs? No, for the dog you need something completely different. The dog doesn't like ham. <laughs> now, as you may have noticed, Jennifer has stopped running. Because while you are being chased by the scissor man, she will always run. Because, well, walking away from the psycho killer is sort of silly. I'm going to check out the stained glass room. Basically, what we want to do is find those bloody car keys so we can get the hell out of here. Elliot wants to know where the corpse went that was there. Will we find out? Sort of. We will at least get a clue. Clearly, this room isn't really playing along. And yet, this is the scariest room of all to me. Where are you going, Jennifer? No, no, don't go into shower. Oh god, what are you doing? Oh well, let's open up here and see if anyone's taking a shower then, shall we?
Oh, I'm, well, I'm so sweaty, I better take a break to... <laughs> no. Let's leave this place and never return. This is actually a completely optional room. There is nothing you need in this room. So visiting it comes down to basically which one of the girls you want to die first. You horrible, horrible person, you. Does it affect later game who dies first? Oh yes, very much so. See, oh hey! A parrot! Hello, parrot! <laughs> wow! Oh god, parrot, stop that! Screw you, parrot. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you neutralize the parrot. That is called a photograph, Jennifer. <laughs> they have been pretty popular since the mid-19th century. Well... It's kind of hard to tell with the bad graphics, but is it supposed to be a broken photograph or just a normal photograph? Yeah, it's been smashed. Yoink. Now, hilariously enough, the parrot can actually kill you. <laughs> well, I did notice it went, your energy went down. Yeah, it can basically pick at Jennifer's head until she falls unconscious. Don't even ask. Also, if the scissor man is anywhere nearby and you let the parrot go, or the parrot is already loose in the room, it will alert him to your presence. Ha! Look at that painting. Who even has something like that? <laughs> Who even has a blank one? That's what I want to know. Let's look, look at the painting a bit. Jennifer does not have a comment, apparently. What? You aren't afraid of the painting, are you? Oh, there's a key in here. Hooray, we now have the West Wing key. key. Oh. Not going to watch TV? Yeah, let's watch TV. Why not? So, what's on? Horrible white noise. My favorite. Let's not watch TV. What's this over here? Light switch? Yeah. Actually, let's not do that. That's a terrible idea. It does kind of indicate where you are. Yeah, and it also ruins your dark vision, which means that if you are forced to escape into a dark room, you will be completely unable to navigate. Really? But it actually genuinely does that? Well, not in the game, but in reality it would have. Oh, yeah. So, so I'm going to pretend. Okay. Every time I run and from a lit... that is a good... Yeah. Every time I run from a lit room to a dark room, I will close my eyes for five seconds. Uh, Camaro asks what I'm wondering. Is he, the scissorman, attracted by light and noise? He is, yes. Light specifically. Noise, not so much, apart from very specific noises, but you will pretty much realize what those are. Mm -hmm. 
at the moment they still have. Like birds that scream, I will kill you. Yeah. For example. <laughs> hey, so, uh, let's see if the front door will open. Of course not. Why would it? Uh, you know what, let's just let Jennifer take a break here for a moment. I like that she just kneels down, too. She doesn't sit down or squat down or put herself in a position where she can start moving quickly. It's just, I'm going to kneel <laughs> down and close my eyes. You are not a terribly clever person, are you, Jennifer? <laughs> well, come now, would you be terribly clever if you were locked in a house with a killer? Well, no more more or less clever than usual, I suppose. <laughs> Not very much at all, so to say. But yeah, then again, it's sort of acceptable, because the manual for the game and the uh, sequel, uh, sequel, among other things, actually say that Jennifer is a bit slow. Really? Yeah. She likes That's reading, kind apparently. Of... Yeah. yeah, she likes reading, apparently, but... Losing your father at an early age apparently stunted her mental growth a bit. That's actually interesting that there is a protagonist who is not the the super person. It's yeah. much better than the typical James Bond can do everything. Yeah, and I mean, she's 14 here. I mean, when you were 14, you probably weren't ready to take on scissor-wielding madmen. <laughs> I don't think anyone now, is. Can the scissor man get into places you can't? Could he be in a wing that you're not in? Well, sort of, so to speak. The game doesn't actually keep track of him if he is in an area you do not have access to. Welp. <laughs> Fuck me, I guess. Indeed. So, we want to continue on the second floor here. We're going to have to find a way to bridge that gap. Since Jennifer is not much of a sporty person, she really can't jump. And besides, she's wearing a long pleated skirt, so it seems unlikely. And high heels, I think, or at least, you know, heeled shoes. Which I would honestly yeah. take off if I wanted to be stealthy. Yeah, but... by now I would have taken those off. Seriously. Wear, just wear your socks, that makes you a lot quieter, if nothing else. Shit, the scissor man is probably using your walking noise as a metronome by now. <laughs> tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. See, it is sort of impressive in the separation stage how they manage to just clear everyone out in 10 seconds. Yeah. Like, literally, oh. the moment Jennifer left the room, they must have just gone crazy and run off in every direction. Alright, we have some blockage here. If you try to climb this, Jennifer will simply slide down, so I'm not even going to show that off. I'm just going to... Uh, Yes, there is a deep crack. Maybe you should do something about that. How about you go in there? Come on, come on. Ugh, fine. What do you mean you don't want to crawl into a dark enclosed space while being chased by a madman? A madman who can clearly stab through walls. As he's done it through doors. Right, so that corridor is apparently completely blocked off, so we will not be able to use that to move around. Of 
question then becomes, do we actually have access to a corridor we can use to get around? I would oh hope God, so. Oh god, this, this bathroom. Why? Why ah. do I always... Why do I always enter this room? <laughs> Frankentan posits that the madman was once a, a mayor who cut ribbons at ceremonies, but it all went wrong. <laughs> well, it worked for Resident Evil 2. Is that a telephone? I do believe it is a telephone. Where is if it? We pick, if we pick it up, it's just probably going to be someone saying seven days or something. <laughs> and we're going to be like, well, yeah, there's sort of a guy with the scissors chasing me today, so... If you want in on that kill, you're probably going to have to hurry up. So there's really no way to progress in this direction at all. I feel like there should be a secret door or something. You lost energy running into the wall. Oh, Yennefer. You are in such a wonderful shape, aren't you? I also like these paintings of Nico Bellic. I mean, look at that face and tell me that is not Nico Bellic from GTA 4. Uh, <laughs> seriously, it's him. It's him. Do, 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 uh. Hooray, West Wing key used. Alright. Answer that stupid phone. I'm just going to... not move for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let's see if I can do that trick. There we go. What is this trick? Every day I'm shuffling. Oh, Noiseless so walking. And, and rest at the same time, or if you walk, something horrible will... <laughs> Basically, if you cancel the walking animation before you make a sound, you can actually walk without making a noise. It is not terribly well, rel rel reliable, of course. Anyway. It depends. If he is if he's in a neighboring room, he can hear the steps. Ah. Of course, if he's in a neighboring room, you can't actually walk at all, so... Let's see what's in here. Okay. Mannequins are always creepy. The mannequin room. Now the interesting thing about the layout in this mansion is that there are four rooms, I believe, that actually switch around every time you start a new game. Which means that huh. the layout isn't always the same. This mannequin room, for example, can be a different room. Moving. Nope. Yeah, let's interact. Seriously, let's interact with a mannequin and see what happens. That seems like a brilliant idea. Oh, its head fell off. That's always good. Uh oh. Ah! Unhand me, you beasts! You do throw! Oh wow! You got away. Yep, because you have a panic button. B. By slamming on it like a madman when something bad happens, you can manage to escape certain death. It takes energy though, which means that if you do not have blue energy when you are attacked, you can be in deep shit. Let's see, let's go into a random room and hope that it's not instant death. It's another bathroom, really? 
Fuck bathrooms. How about this one? Can we have a room with a big sign that says hide behind me or something? Place. Perhaps the scissor man is afraid of fire. Oh dear. This is an unpleasant situation. down to red energy now though which means that uh, not only will the end of a trip constantly a single hit will kill us now oh god that was the same room that was a terrible idea Behaving like you are the victim in a slasher flick. It's not <laughs> going to help you. Even though you are the victim in a slasher flick. And we are on the other end of the collapsed corridor now. Oh. Which means that we have access to the area that was closed off by that rubble. Hello, hey! Plank time! Through your shit! Oh god. <laughs> Time for a rest. Uh, uh, oh, what's that yellow thing around the statue? Yeah, let's just inspect the statue while we're on red health. Good idea. <laughs> Especially because it looks like that was hastily painted over or something. Ugh. Uh. Uh I'm too young for this shit. <laughs> oh god. Uh. Takes a while to recover, huh? Yeah. Then again, it's not really surprising. She has been running away on an adrenaline high, like, for three minutes straight. I'd be tired too. Jennifer, Jennifer is sort of unused to physical activity as well because she's been raised in the orphanage to be a refined girl so she's basically been sitting around looking pretty and reading books. So this whole gotcha. moving, ara moving around thing really isn't her, well, thing. You'd think if, you know, they were trying to get her adopted, they would teach her useful things like how to clean floors and how to milk a cow. <laughs> Ohio! Sorry, that was uncalled for. <laughs> Not really. Seriously, if I'm going to marry, she'd better damn well know how to milk a cow. Ooh, all right. about ten minutes to learn. <laughs> I was about to say, uh. <laughs> it's not really a craft that takes a life to master, actually. Okay, so what do we have here? A thing. And what about this thing? It is also a thing. The wall does indeed look painted over, so how about you do something about it? Goodness. 
Well, on the other side there, you saw a plank. And we sort of want to tip that plank over. Problem is that we're on the wrong side now, so we can't. I assume you can actually approach it without having the scissor man chasing after you at the time. Yes, you can. Let's inspect this thing. Some rope. Now, rope is useful in pretty much every situation in real life, but you know what? Not particularly useful here. Nope. Now this is interesting because that is actually a random event. What is in that box differs. Yeah, sure. Refuse to jump now. Why don't you? You silly little girl. He's pretty slow if he hasn't gotten out of that door yet. Yeah, and Yennefer's refusing to continue to the right. So... This is, go this is probably going to be a bit tricky, isn't it? Can lasso that uh, flank there. Let's give it a shot. Rope. Swing over, damn it. Lower yourself down. Attached to statue. Where are you going? <laughs> Jennifer. For fuck's sake. Focus. Oh well. Let's go inside and see if he's still here. Maybe he's disappeared. And he has. And then he appears in the door. How did he do that? How did he? The creepy guy with giant scissors. He's magic. Well, I realize that, but goddamn, that was some serious magic right there. Jeez. Yes, as Frankatan says, he took the NPC elevator. Right, so... Apparently, we are in a bit of a pickle. Apparently so. Let's see if I can get the timing for the panic button down so that we don't actually die instantly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, Jennifer, you hapless little... <laughs> Cause he's, Stab there, he's cheating. He's standing yeah. on, on space that doesn't exist. He's stabbing from off-screen. In a screen-based game. Dick move. Maybe if we hide in this box, he won't realize we're here. Come at me, bro. Come at me. Perfect place to trip, Yennefer. Really, I'm <laughs> impressed. You you couldn't have picked that better if you were being directed. But that Usually, you might actually have to jump down there or something, Yennefer, because you're not actually getting away otherwise, I think. Oh, 
Now's a good time to rest, definitely. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Perfect time. At the same time, that statue looks really weird, like there is something wrapped around it. I just... Uh. It's sort of funny that we're still in chase mode, but he's not actually coming after us, is he? Since we can't progress past this screen, I'm not entirely sure what they expect us to do at this point. I suppose it could just be bad luck at the draw and we have reached an actual dead end from which there is no surviving with to continue. That is entirely possible. Still, you have rope. I feel like wouldn't rope be a really good way to get out of here? Tie it somewhere, anywhere. Lower yourself down. Then again, with your pathetic arm strength, you probably would fall and die instead. Throw the ham on it. Throw the ham at it, alright. Feed ham to statue. Receive space rockets. <laughs> Also, this is a Sierra game. In certain sequences, it might as well be, seriously. But yeah, this is sort of tricky because apparently they are not willing to spawn the Scissor Man here because they know that there is no current escape in this area. But we only have access to one room, and if we enter that room, is there and instantly kills us. Well, while we're pondering that question, let's double check. Everyone in the stream chat, the sound levels aren't too horrible, I hope. You can hear me, you can hear Domus, and you can hear the game at the same time, right? Seriously, this is getting sort of ridiculous. Quick, hide in the box! You'll never find you in the box! I do believe, uh, yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to restart. Seems like it, yeah. Well, that is a shame, because what happened here basically is we had bad luck with the RNG, because. If he hadn't been in the box, we would have been fine. Now the case was such that he was in the box, which means that, uh, yeah. We rolled badly. Yeah. We fumbled our weapon. Also, this is the pause screen. Alright then. It literally just stops you from moving the marker and pauses the game. It doesn't show in any way, other way that the game is paused other than that you lose control. Which is hilarious because one of the absolute best ways to scare the shit out of people in this game is to pause the game on them without them realizing because suddenly they are unable to move and they see the scissor man. Then they just start screaming and yelling and waving their arms around. Well, it's a damn shame, Jennifer, but I think you're going to have to commit suicide by scissors. It's been good working with you. I seriously love those stabs from off-screen, they're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> 